In this video, I'll uncover the many fats that you could be eating on a daily basis that is causing insulin resistance. I know, you're seeing this video and you're literally about to lose it because you know what? You know that sugary foods cause insulin resistance. You know that high carb diets and sugary sodas that all causes insulin resistance. And now I'm telling you that fats cause insulin resistance. Even though you're trying to follow a high fat diet and you're told it's going to help reverse this problem, now I'm telling you it actually can cause it. But here's the deal. You really have to just understand how to navigate all this, right? I know that I'm going to get a big response from this video of going, oh my gosh, it feels like you just can't eat anything anymore. Well, no, you just have to know how to make the right choices, right? There's good and bad in everything. And so that's what I'm going to teach you in this video. We're going to talk about the fats that are actually causing insulin resistance in your body. We're going to identify those. We're going to talk about a little bit about the science and research behind it. And then of course, we'll talk about the proper fats to eat towards the end of this video. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and join our notification community. That way it can help you excel your health and your life. Let's go ahead and dive in with the fats that cause insulin resistance. Now, you saw in another video, I said, you know, depending on how you are looking at insulin resistance, there's different perspectives on it, right? If you're going to take your endocrinology perspective, you're going to talk about, you know, the hormone insulin going high in the pancreas and the beta cells. But if you take an immunological perspective, you're going to talk about how inflammation actually causes insulin resistance. When we talk about these fats, we're talking about it from an inflammatory standpoint, right? Fats in general don't raise your insulin levels very high. They don't raise your blood sugar. But what they're going to do is cause an inflammatory reaction if you're eating the wrong fats, okay? So they're going to increase inflammatory markers. They're going to increase this uh, inflammatory cascade that's going to occur in the body, and it's going to cause massive inflammation. There's the NF-kappa B response that can happen, and as a result, what essentially is going to uh, happen is that you're going to mess up those insulin receptors. You're going to cause a lot of problems there, okay? And not only is is this inflammatory reaction going to cause insulin resistance? But the other thing that it can do is it can actually cause cancer, it can cause heart disease, it can cause brain problems, all these different issues that we're trying to avoid. Here's the other ways that the fats cause insulin resistance. They actually impair insulin receptors function, okay? So all of a sudden, the insulin receptors, which are doing their normal job, they're allowing the insulin into the cell, and they're allowing you to get that blood sugar into the cell, all of a sudden, they don't work correctly. So there you have a problem with insulin resistance. It interferes with insulin signaling, okay? So you know the insulin has to be able to function correctly by hearing the proper signals. If the signals aren't there, then this whole process does not work well. well the fats are going to interfere with that signaling. It also is going to increase risk factors for diabetes, okay? When we look at the risk factors for diabetes, we're talking about, you know, high blood pressure. We're talking about um, belly fat. We're talking about high cholesterol, all these different risk factors that are out there. And if you're consuming these bad fats, then this is going to be a big problem. So let's go ahead and talk about the specific fats that are going to cause insulin resistance, okay? And so these are the trans fats. So your question may first be is what are trans fats? Some people say they're healthy, some people say they're bad. This is a bit of a confusing topic and I get it, all right? So we're going to talk about the good ones and the bad ones, okay? So there is natural trans fats. Most people have the idea that all fat, all trans fats are bad, but truthfully, there are some good ones. And this is where some people get the idea that all trans fats are good. Goods, but there's good and bad just like there's good and bad in everything. So the natural trans fats are going to be the ones that are essentially found in nature, okay? They're the ones that are found in your meat products. They're the ones found in your dairy products. They're naturally occurring in the food. Nobody put them there. Nobody made them in a lab. They're just naturally occurring there, okay? And then there's the artificial trans fats. Now, the artificial trans fats are the ones that, you know, are referred to as industrial trans fats. They're the man-made trans fats, however you want to label them, but they're basically made, you know? They don't, they don't just naturally occur in nature. Now, they're chemical altered vegetable oils, okay? So one of the things that happens when it comes to these chemically altered uh, vegetable oils, these trans fats, they want to make them, first of all, shelf stable, okay? So they want them to last a long time on the shelf without going bad. The other thing is, is that they want them to stay liquid, okay? Because fats naturally harden and turn into a block, like that block of coconut oil in the tub when you go shopping in the store when it's a cooler temperature. So anyway, these are named as hydrogenated and partially hydrogenated oils. This is important to know when you're looking at the packages of the food that you're actually buying, you're looking at the ingredients. And I'm going to tell you why this is even more 
deceptive in just a moment. Now, the other thing that we're going to look for is we're going to look for things like margarine, right? These are trans fats. These are common trans fats that you're finding in your food. Canola oil, soybean oil, and vegetable shortening. These are all things that are in your daily foods that you're eating and you're probably consuming them and we want to make sure that we avoid them. And the other thing that we have to consider here is that for the people who are eating a dirty keto, this is highly inflammatory. I recently did a video on clean keto versus dirty keto and a lot of people thought, well, who cares? You know what? Keto is keto, whether it's you know good fats or bad fats. And the point that I really stress is that these bad fats are bad for you. I never really broke it down further like we're doing in this video, but these bad fats are highly inflammatory. This is why following the ketogenic diet, eating a whole bunch of bad fats is not going to be a good thing. You can actually drive a problem with insulin resistance from a massive inflammatory response in the body. Now let's talk about the common exposures that you're coming across on a daily basis if you are someone who, are, who is you know, really not aware of how to avoid these different trans fats. So a big one is non-dairy creamers. You may not know this, some of you, that a lot of these creamers out there that you're getting from restaurants, from bakeries, from the grocery store is actually non-dairy. It's basically a big bottle of hydrogenated oil that is flavored in actually just kind of colored to make it look like dairy, but it is not dairy at all. So we have to be very careful of this. I was so disturbed the first time I figured out that this is something that actually exists. I was at a friend's house, I looked in the fridge, he had a creamer in there, I got it, and I just wanted to look at the ingredients, make sure it was good, and it literally had no cream, it was just hydrogenated oil. Now the next is fried foods, okay? This is something a lot of people are eating, right? Pretty much all the fast food restaurants out there, they're taking these different vegetable oils, they're frying them, when you fry it, it'll actually take a oil that does not have that much trans fat in it and increase the trans fat ratio by a pretty high amount. So fried foods is a big one. We gotta make sure that we're staying away from that. Baked goods, okay? So like I said, you're going to your favorite bakery, a lot of the muffins, the cookies, the you know pastries, all these things are typically loaded with trans fats and we have to make sure that we avoid these. Remember, highly inflammatory and not only do they cause insulin resistance, but they cause a lot of other problems in the body packaged foods, okay, and I'm not talking about your, you know, healthy whole food packaged um, vegetables. I'm talking about your packaged foods like your cakes, your um, cookies, your, um, you know, all these different things out there. We have to make sure that we're avoiding these. A lot of the different breads, we have to make sure that we're going and avoiding these different really highly processed packaged foods. And then movie popcorn is another big exposure that a lot of people get hydrogenated oils from. When you go to the movie and you think you're putting that butter on your popcorn, it literally is just flavored hydrogenated oil that is highly salted. Watch out for that. Now, here's where it becomes a little bit tricky, okay? This is when reading labels isn't enough. And you're like, are you kidding me? How is reading labels not enough? Again, this is the point where people go, I'm just gonna like quit on this health thing because it seems so impossible. You know, it's just a matter of taking it one step at a time. You know, when I tell people that it literally took me years to transform from an unhealthy diet to a very healthy lifestyle, it's because I kept learning things like this, right? It didn't just all come at once. It didn't just hit me in one night. It took years, you know, you had to break the bad habits. You had to learn how to navigate it. You get tons of incorrect information and then you, you know, replace that incorrect information with the good information. It just is a process and you know, this is part of the process is you learning this. So reading labels isn't good enough and why is that? And that's because there's 0.5 grams or less in a lot of these foods and if there's 0.5 grams or less then essentially they don't have to list it, okay? So if you buy a food and it has 0.5 grams or less per serving in it then essentially they are not required according to the FDA to actually go and list this, okay? Another thing is vegetable oils. Vegetable oils contain a high percentage of trans fats in them. Some of them can be upwards of 5% trans fat. And like I said, if the oils were actually heated, in the case of like a fried food, it's gonna have a higher amount of trans fat that we're working with in this situation. Now, when you buy foods and they have vegetable oils in it, they don't have to say it has trans fats. They can actually say it contains no trans fats. But in fact, the vegetable oils have trans fats. And if it's a fried vegetable oil or a highly heated vegetable oil, then you're going to find that the trans fat ratio increases. So we have to make sure that, you know, we're aware of this. We're looking out for vegetable oils in our foods and we're also, you know, just basically avoiding a lot of the junk processed foods out there because, you know, they're going to have 0.5 grams or less of trans fats in it because it's an inexpensive fat to put in the food. Many of these companies are looking ways to cut costs, but actually still create the food the way that a lot of people like it. So they got to get those fats in there because it tastes better that way. And as a result, they use the really low quality 
uh, fat in order to achieve that. Now let's talk about the healthy non-inflammatory fats, right? Because we talked about you know the canola oil, the corn oil, the soybean oil, all those ones that you want to stay away from. Let's talk about the ones that are actually healthy for you. First, olive oil. Olive oil is actually an anti-inflammatory oil. So super good uh, oil that actually has a lot of antioxidants in it. Great one to include in your daily routine. Coconut oil is a good one. Avocado oil is a good one here. And then of course, butter. So you can in include those all and they're going to have the opposite effect on your body as the trans fats will. Also fatty fish is great. Full fat dairy dark chocolate and nut butters like almond butter. So these are all gonna be really good, healthy sources of fats. Eggs are also a really good source of fat that I didn't have listed here as well. So you wanna make sure that you're sticking to these good fats. And if you wanna learn more about good fat versus bad fat, I did a whole video on it right up here just talking about the importance of avoiding these particular fats and then all the good ones that you can utilize in your daily routine and also utilize in the ketogenic diet or any type of high fat diet. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section here below. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about weight loss, intermittent fasting, the ketogenic diet, all the things that you love and hit that bell notification so that you're alerted every time a new piece of content comes out. Lastly, check out my other videos right over here that are going to help you drastically improve your health. And I'll see you in the next video.